if you experience mortality between two to five weeks in Brella without beds showing little or no signs in your farm, then this video is for you. As a Brella farmer, sometimes you might experience sudden, rapid and unexplained death or mortality of your beds. The dead beds will usually rot very quickly from the inside out and once you dissect or open the bed, it may appear that the bed died due to coccidiosis infection. But this is not true. On this video, I will explain what happens to your beds, how to detect it, and possible solutions and treatment that will eradicate it completely from your flock. Just ensure to stay till the end. This disease also affects layer pullets raised in cages. There are a lot of secret tips and I'm also going to show you how to differentiate this disease from others with similar symptoms. What's up my people? Welcome to Life of a Farmer Loaf. You can also follow me on my Facebook page at Life of a Farmer Loaf for regular updates. I welcome all my old and new subscribers and viewers that are yet to subscribe. Please kindly subscribe to my channel as we discuss issues relating to farming and how to grow your farm and make more profit. Please click the bell icon so that you don't miss future upload. Like this video and ensure to comment and most importantly share for others to benefit. Without wasting your time, let's dive into the main cocoa. This disease is commonly seen in 2 to 5 weeks old broilers, and for turkeys, it's between 7 to 12 weeks old that are mostly raised in deep litter system. Layer pullets in cages are also not an exception. In fact, when mortality occurs early, it is often related to concurrent coccidiosis. This doesn't mean coccidiosis drugs will cure it. Though the bacteria grows in the intestinal tract of beds, it grows under anaerobic conditions, that is, in the absence of oxygen, and is highly resistant to drying, heat, acid, and other harsh conditions, and the spores usually produced by this organism are commonly found in water, soy, feed, manure, and other environmental sources. Naturally, there are small numbers of this bacterium known as Clostridium perfringens in the intestinal tract of even healthy birds. I will give you a very important tip here, so don't just skip the video yet. The secret tip here is that because the presence of the bacterium is present naturally in the intestinal tract of healthy boilers, but they don't cause disease, this is because the good bacteria in the intestinal tract keep this Clostridium perfringens population small in number. This is why I always give my boilers antioxidant made naturally along with personally produced good bacteria. This good bacteria does wonders and you can actually produce it at home with just rice water. This is after you wash your rice raw before cooking. This rice water also has other uses which I stated in my video about rice water. I will drop the link in the description box at the bottom. Make sure to check it out after watching this video. Like I always say in my videos, Knowing the cause of this disease will give you a better understanding of how to manage and control it. But first, what are the noticeable signs? Since it shows very little or no signs, but just dead beds as the case may be. One constraint of this disease is that its clinical signs are similar to other diseases such as coccidiosis for instance. There is dehydration in beds and decrease in feed consumption. The ruffled feathers and diarrhea normally seen in coccidiosis are also present. The bed will be reluctant to move and there is signs of depression. When one sees all these signs, he might be treating coccidiosis. But the truth is that concurrent coccidiosis, especially that which is caused by Emeria maxima, could promote this disease known as necrotic enteritis. For this reason, make sure to know the effective medicine be it synthetic or harbor to use to control coccidiosis. I also have a video on why coccidiosis keeps reoccurring on your farm. You can use the link above or better still, I will drop the link in the description box. Another very important factor that could lead to necrotic enteritis is oftentimes relates to either after a change in the intestinal microflora or as an effect of a condition that results in damage of intestinal mucosa, such as coccidiosis, which I have previously stated. Mycotoxins, salmonellosis, and ascardiosis, which has to do with intestinal worm, are also factors that could prompt necrotic enteritis. Aside this, which I have listed, feed is also a major factor that could cause this disease, most especially 
feed with high dietary amounts of animal byproducts such as fish meal, meat, and even bone meal. Wheat, oats also predispose birds to necrotic enteritis. In essence, one could then say that anything that promotes excessive bacterial growth and toxin production that slows the passage rate of feed in the small intestine could promote necrotic enteritis in your birds. That is why building the gut of your birds from day old is very important by using herbal remedy. You can use the link below in the description box to watch it. Poor water quality also contributes to this disease as bacteria load in drinking water matters a lot. You can use iodine tincture to treat your water before administering to your beds. But when using iodine, you don't have to give to your beds on a daily basis. You can check the top right corner of your screen and also I will drop the link in the description box on the perfect drugs that act as antibacterial, antifogal, antiviral and disinfectant for poultry beds. It's a must watch. Try to watch it after this video as I will drop the link at the end of this video. At this point, let me tell you the quickest and easiest ways to identify this disease and what differentiates it from other diseases such as coccidiosis as tip number 2. But first, kindly subscribe if you haven't and turn on the bell icon for prompt updates. Please give this video a like, comment and share for others to benefit. Thanks. Here is a secret tip number 2 on how to differentiate it from other diseases. It's quite simple. It is due to the presence of dark colored diarrhea. Because of the sudden death, dead birds are seen to be dehydrated and seems to rot very quickly from the inside out. Secondly, if you happen to open the beds, it may appear that the bed has coccidiosis, but the difference is that the intestines are ballooned with gas. They are fragile and contain a foul smell and brownish fluid. It is very easy to identify. Now, the next stage is how to prevent this disease. There are various ways to prevent this disease and the first is to practice basic bowel security. The second way is avoidance of animal byproducts such as fish meal. This is a major problem because it cannot, it can't be avoided, but the needed inclusion level shouldn't be exceeded in feed formulation. The third way to prevent it, which is also very important, is to prevent coccidiosis, which is the main predisposing factor, and also any factor that can cause stress in beds as this can alter the intestinal environment, thereby allowing Clostridium perfusions to grow and produce toxin. The fourth way to prevent it is to use probiotics and also supplement diet with yeast extracts, prebiotics, organic minerals and enzymes. I already made a video on how to use yeast as a growth promoter which I will drop the link at the bottom of the description box. Do well to check it out after this video. I also have video on how to make your probiotics and prebiotics. All the links to this video I will drop at the bottom of the description box. The essence of applying these probiotics prebiotics or yeast to your cheeks immediately upon arrival at the brooder house is that it will provide an ideal opportunity for the beneficial bacteria to colonize the digestive tract before cheeks are exposed to potentially pathogenic bacteria and fungi in the broiler house. Once this can be done, it will help to develop the digestive tract and protect against enteric infections. The fifth way of prevention will lead us into the treatment and this is use of antimicrobial medicated drinking water or in feed. For effectiveness, antimicrobials are administered in drinking water and the most commonly used drugs of choice are bacitracin, which is used via water for 5 to 7 days or penicillin for 5 days. Lincomycin can also be used for 7 days has also proven to be very effective. A very important point is that the medicated water should and must be administered all through the days of the treatment. In conclusion, an outbreak of necrotic enteritis are usually short-lived and mortality in this period could be as high as 50% within the beds. The major point is to prevent coccidiosis and avoiding certain feedstuffs are key to prevent it. Please subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, comment and share for others to benefit. Thanks and God bless. See you in my next video. Peace out.